that, that, that. Oh, hi. My name's JD, and I'm 12 years old, and I like to collect things. I collect funny hats. Hats like this. And this. Hi, a toy. Yeah. Hola. I have lots of interesting hats, but that's not all I have. I have type 1 diabetes, but I'm not the only one. Lots of people have diabetes. It can be confusing to describe to someone who doesn't know what diabetes is or the difference between type 1 and type 2 diabetes. So that's why I had this put in. <laughs> Pretty cool, right? It's popular at parties. First, I'll take off my skin. It's called the epidermis, and it's the largest organ in the body. Now I'll pull aside my muscles. Don't try this at home. Ah, here we are. Now I'll show you how my diabetes affects my body. Uh-oh. A lot of other stuff is in the way. Hiya, Heart. I'm busy, so I need you to beat it. I'm working here. What's new, liver? Not a thing. Buenos tardes, stomach. Hola, JD. Hey, good to see you, intestine. Wait. Where's my pancreas? Excuse me just a second. Ah, there you are. Well, what's wrong, pancreas? I don't feel so hot. Uh-oh. The body has a lot of parts. If any one thing is wrong, it can affect the rest of the body. Well, let's run a test to pinpoint the problem. I'll need to eat something. Uh, how about a peach? I'm a talking peach. Oh, well then I probably shouldn't eat you. Uh, what about a pear? You can't eat me. I have a mustache. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I know. Uh, how about an apple? Ah. Ow. Because I have type 1 diabetes, my pancreas is the part that acts up. Yeah, and insulin is like a key that the pancreas produces. And when your body uses the insulin key, it opens the doors in the cell walls of your body. And that lets food energy in. If the pancreas doesn't send out the insulin, your body can't open the door. And you can't receive the energy you need throughout the day. This can all be a bit confusing. My doctor who diagnosed me with type 1 diabetes can explain it better. Hi, JD. Hi, doctor. Oh, hello. Your body needs to produce more insulin. What's insulin? Insulin is a hormone. It's the stuff that enables people to get energy from food. The pancreas usually makes insulin, but your pancreas isn't making it properly. Well, if my pancreas can't make insulin, well, how will I get it? There are several different ways to get insulin. People with diabetes might take an insulin shot several times a day. Well, a shot? Like, like with a needle? Not a needle that big. Ah, that's more like it. You can also get insulin by wearing an insulin pump that puts insulin into your body automatically. What's an insulin pump? Is that like when my mother cleans the carpet with? No. This is an insulin pump. A person with diabetes can wear one of these that puts insulin into their body just when they need it. Look! I've got my own insulin pump. Pretty cool, huh? Hi, JD. Oh, hi, Jenny. What is that cool thing you're holding? Is it an iPod? It's an eye pump. Eye pump? An insulin pump. It pumps insulin in my body when I need it. Oh. What, do I need one? No. Your body already makes all the insulin it needs. But my body doesn't. Well, does that mean you're sick? I have a disease called diabetes. <gasps> a disease? Well, can I catch it? No, I was born with it. Oh. Well, can you go swimming with diabetes? Because a bunch of us are going to the pool later. Oh, sure I can. I can do anything. I'll catch up with you later. Okay, JD. <laughs> my doctor said there are two kinds of diabetes. Type 1 is the kind of diabetes that I have because my body does not make enough insulin. The body of a person who has type 2 diabetes does make insulin, but it doesn't make enough, and the body can't use it right. Type 2 happens in kids and older people, too. Sometimes you can help prevent type 2 diabetes through exercise and healthy eating. Lots of people with diabetes eat right and exercise every day. Millions and millions and millions of them right here in all over the world. This includes children, moms, dads, cousins, aunts, uncles, grandparents, friends, and neighbors, and... Chickens? 
I don't think so, chicken. <laughs> what a bird brain. <laughs> it's important to remember that even though there are lots of people with diabetes, it's not contagious. It's not like a common cold. You can't catch it from other people. You can't catch it from other people? Well, that's good to know. And it's also important to remember that you cannot develop type 1 diabetes from eating too much sugar. <gasps> Thank goodness, because I've got a whole box of cookies. Ah, <laughs> suggested serving size is two. Mm. Oh. Hmm. Those of us with type 1 diabetes have to eat on a regular schedule. And we have to test our blood sugar before we eat anything. I test my blood sugar by pricking my finger. It doesn't hurt, and I hardly notice it anymore. The meter tells me whenever my blood sugar is too high or too low, or just right. If my blood sugar is too high, I need to take an insulin shot. If my blood sugar is too low, I need to eat a snack. A carb-friendly snack. That's right. And if my blood sugar is just right, I get to celebrate. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the top 10 symptoms of type 1 diabetes. Drum roll, please. Number 10, being thirsty all the time. I'm still thirsty. Waiter! Number 9, going to the bathroom a lot. Excuse me, gotta go. Number 8, sleepiness or being tired. Number seven, being hungry all the time. I'm so hungry, I could eat a horse. <laughs> well, maybe not. <laughs> Number six, getting skinnier all of a sudden. <laughs> Number five, changes in how your eyes are working. Number four, sugar in the urine. Ask your doctor. It's Dr. the B. Number three, fruity odor on the breath. I smell grapes. <sighs> oh, it's me. Number two, heavy or labored breathing. <gasps> <gasps> and the number one symptom of type one diabetes is stupor or unconsciousness. Stupor? No, stupor. Diabetes can cause a lot of health issues. It can cause damage to many organ systems. Your heart, your eyes, your kidneys, even your nervous system. It isn't contagious, but it is still a serious disease, and it doesn't go away, even when you grow up. This is why it's so important to do more research, right? That's right. By studying diabetes, scientists and doctors can learn about what will cure type 1 and type 2 diabetes. Although taking insulin can usually keep people with diabetes alive, it is not a cure. But today, lots of people are looking for a cure. The Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation was started in 1970 by a group of parents who all had kids, just like me, living with type 1 diabetes. This little group of parents has turned into millions of volunteers all around the world. It's our mission. To find the cure for diabetes. Through the support of research from JDRF. So now you've learned some things about diabetes. Listen up for how you can all help JDRF because we're dedicated to finding a cure. <laughs> <laughs>